Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll ask you to take your seats, please, as we're about to begin. Now, before I begin, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like you to please join me in thanking John Burge for that beautiful commissioned piece of music called Oscillation. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm thrilled to have you joining us here today for this exciting event. My name is Fuad Al-Gindi, I'm the Managing Director of Spark, and I have the honor and pleasure to introduce John Fisher, the Interim Vice Principal of Research at Queen's University, Chairperson of the Spark Board of Management, and who will be our MC this morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Fuad. Welcome. It's a great day if you're a duck out there on uh, eastern Ontario. Uh, and uh, I hope you have an opportunity to enjoy this uh, wonderful building uh, and lovely facility. As Fuad mentioned, my name is John Fisher, uh, and it's been my pleasure to interact very closely with uh, the Spark Board of Management. And it's also a pleasure to act as your MC today and welcome you to this absolutely stunning facility and to listen to John's wonderful uh, composition this morning. The Bader Centre for the Performing Arts is one of those uh, spectacular facilities at Queen's. It is both uh, important for art, for scholarship, for research, and is a parallel in the arts <coughs> to Snow Lab in Sudbury and to the expertise that resides at Queen's University. Thank you to those who have traveled far to be with us here today, including those individuals who've made the trek from across the country. And hello to all of you who are joining us via the live stream. It's a pleasure to have you online and to acknowledge our partner institutions across the country. We have with us here today Liz Fletcher, graduate student in the Department of uh, Physics, Engineering, Physics, and Astronomy. You might want to wave here. Uh, Nathan Brinklow, uh, lecturer in Mohawk Language and, and Culture and Indigenous Advisor, Office of the Interfaith University Chaplain. Nathan. Uh, Marie-Cécile Biro, Assistant Professor of Physics at the University of Alberta. Welcome. Uh, Professor Tony Noble, Scientific Director of SPARC. Tony. Welcome. Uh, and uh, Sandra Crocker, Associate Vice Principal, Strategic Initiatives and Operations at Carleton University. Uh, and you may know that Queen's recently made a donation to uh, the Presidency Office at Carleton. Um, also, uh, of course, Dr. Arthur McDonald, Gordon and Patricia Gray Chair in Particle Astrophysics Emeritus, and co-recipient of the 2015 Nobel Prize in Physics and 2016 Breakthrough Prize. Uh, the Honorable Kate Young, Parliamentary Secretary for Science, welcome Kate, and uh, Professor Daniel Wolf, Scholar and Principal and Vice Chancellor of Queen's University. We also have a number of special guests joining us in the audience today, and I would like to recognize all those in attendance from our partner universities and research institutions. Welcome to Kingston and welcome to Queen's. Also, we have uh, individuals from the Government of Canada, Pierre Normand, VP, External Relations and Communications from the Canada Foundation for Innovation, a very strong partner in the physics community at Queen's and across Canada, and Ms. Elaine Hood, Science Programs and Partnerships, Science and Research Sector at Innovation, Science and Economic <coughs> Development, another important ministry within the government that is a keen collaborator and an important partner with universities across Canada and with Queen's. And last but not least, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. McDonald uh, and his wife, Janet. Uh, see Jan, know she's here somewhere. Thank you, Janet, great to see you. Um, and her family and arts family. Uh, we all know that art has worked tirelessly uh, as a scientist and an ambassador for physics. Uh, and I'd also like to acknowledge 
the tireless work of his family uh, in supporting him in that, uh, in that goal. We're delighted to have you all with us today. And before we begin the formal program, I'd like to introduce Nathan Brinklow to give the Haudenosaunee Thanksgiving address. Thank you, Nathan. What can you do to say what we're going? Tanya Das, Nenu Wax Noda, the Waginato, Gotteg and Idiwagano, Tanaga, Kerihunyanis, Ne Queens, Nunga, the Ganya Geha, the New Gari Hodas. Agua Egons in the Newagat Sanuni, Gaw, Agezege, the Guanu Horado, Uman Hisarade, the Naguayano was said, Dies of Wariwa Dunja, the Nenunga who went Neha, Neni Yogion, Zi Gaw, Own and Gari West Jung Wander. A hondo or ten or nearly Hoana, under the Wahwe at Nuni, Nenu Guatni Gorna, that it's no Hordad, and Signore Aguego sat all year at Suma. Nenu Hoda, you carry Hunyan, you carry Hunyus, than on the Amza da de Heraqua, Daya Guadanusta da de, Nero Honda, Nenu Hoda, you can't again has. On a ne do one, that the Wadas one, that it's no Hordad, Aguego and West Suma. Nenu Hadi Zigon, that the Wajat the Rodo. Tano ni hari te oye ro te riwaya, toko nu ro te yote, a zi yaka anta hune. Ne gari te itinu horado, ne ro di yote sarawana ni ni hari, zi ka a wahadi riwa sarunya te daido wajat te roro. Eto ni nukak, ne na gwa ni gorna. Tano oni, de itinu horado, ne agwego ne gah ne garunya, Zigaa, Jungwa, Zigaa, 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 into Duni Haje. Negari date no Hordado, or Wagner own this soon, Neno Gija soon, and on Uqua soon, Negahik soon, and Jun Hequan, then a Wagner Gorunda soon, date no Hordados, except Gon Sego, Yukiat again has, Nijun Hiohage, Gonto Johandage. Ne egari date no Hordados, Ne Aguagon to Nahodo, Wade Hyardos, Ohunzage, Gundicious. Garunyake, Nene Gunti go jin o jinua suma, Gisego, Radi Tesra Hawis, the Hadi Wanza do Darhos, Dano Negario da Suma Gisego de Watgatos, Neo Jinua Suma, Negaranios, Negari Dayton Hurado, Sokne Aguego, Scan and Agahage. Negari Dechid Nuara de Chidoa Nu Hurados, at Guego Nene Saoyer Suma, Ne Radisat Stone Sarawana, Radisat Stone Saraya. Nene Gayeri Nicovarake, in Nukosotogun or Radiweras, Negari Date New Horado, she said, Go Scott Nero de Daje, Ida was says, Ida was, Ida was, sir, Ida was, Ida was where the warrior yet day. Took no hold on a sego into Dunihaja, she can hold a sego while the Yaros gone to the Hongzake. Negari Date New Horados, Nene Nohoda Ni, Yungua, Nehoda Ni, Yunguanado, Yunkinis, Yunkisota, Santa Neca Garaqua. Jia go swat head on jinu asuntes awara skan and ida wara shi da kwan sarat da kwan hage. Dano nuwa, de tzidu nuwa radu, nene hodra radu nukwa ne ye tzidu wa zi ato keneka garakwa. Nene sat de gahawi, ona de tzidu nuwa radu, agwego ne yoji sto kwaru nyo jit garo nyage. Dano uwa ni sarade nene agwa igon zi ne e yu gwari hoana da yi tzidu nuwa radu, agwego ne gigan radi sat stan sarawana, nene agwego a tsitkaya o hanzage a gwegon tsitkaya o garhnyage ne gari de tsunu radu chi sego sungwa roris nere deriwaya chi no hoda ona yungwa deri andre tano zo hoda sego de wari wat sarius onska se are de tsunu horados a gwegon ega sat stan sara wano sa ayera no hoda rad road no hoda ro naja gera dina dunko ne sungwa tisa o ero di sanaya Negari de tu hurada, a guego negasat, not Sarawana, sat a year, so clean a guego, scona, a gahake, dana a water scona, go, died a wala sheet, dark once, lat, dark one hake. On a garden in Nua, what dirty what twenty, dog a ten on a sun get negro, or what I was out the sundaram. 
doga atano ni son get ni go ho wa as wa as wa as as wa kodago ze wa ni go na go so ko go ego scan na go ha ke dan garu garu kanu hora don sura ne go ego scan na go ha ke eto ni dak ne na go ni go na ya wa gi wa hi Thank you again, Nathan. You'll note that the invitation today called us together for a launch of a national astroparticle physics research network. The fruition of the work of many investigators across the country and the support of the Canada First Research Excellence Fund grant of $63.7 million. That grant received in 2016 supports the collaboration of eight universities and five research institutions. Today's event was titled Small Particles, Big Announcement. Intriguing, we hope so. Exciting, most definitely, and we wish to share this with you. We, I, I and we don't really wish to keep you in suspense, although we hope you do have some anticipation of the announcement to be made this morning. It is my pleasure to introduce our first two speakers. Principal Daniel Wolf is chair of the Spark Board Nomination Committee, and, so, and, <clears throat> and Sandra Crocker is the Associate Vice President from Carleton University and is a member of the Spark Board Management. Please join me in welcoming them to the podium. Thank you very much, John, and good morning, everyone. I am pleased to be here today because not only will this event mark a historic moment for research here at Queen's, but also for each of our partner institutions and for Canadian scientific research as a whole. In particular, I'd like to give a special hello and welcome, bonjour et bienvenue, to our partners across Canada watching today's announcement through our live stream. Thank you all for joining us. In every corner of our university, you'll find researchers working hard to solve the world's problems and answer some big questions. An area of undeniable strength and excellence for Queen's is in our physics, engineering physics, and astronomy department where researchers working in nanomaterials, photonics, cosmology, computing, nuclear and medical physics, among others, have made great advances and helped position Queens as a leader in this area of research. But when you think about how far we've come as a collective in the area of astroparticle physics research, over the past 30 years, you can't help but marvel at the significant accomplishments we've made. Those in the room today who were at the beginning of the snow experiments perhaps did not conceive that the journey would include such exciting discoveries and accolades, including the breakthrough prize in physics, millions of dollars in research funding, and of course, the Nobel Prize. Not to mention the fact that we are attracting the world's best to Canada to advance our research strength in this area. At Queen's, we are privileged to have Gilles Herbier as the Canada Excellence Research Chair in Particle Astrophysics, as well as Tony Noble, the Scientific Director of CPARC, and Mark Chen, the Gordon and Patricia Gray Chair in Particle Astrophysics, just to name a few of the remarkably talented researchers based here. With the success of our researchers has come funding to help advance the science and grow the research network to where we are now. The success of this enterprise is made even sweeter because of the partnerships and collaborations we have forged along the way. The exploration and findings that the research network has uncovered and are working to discover 
remind me of the mission of another enterprise, one that claims to boldly go where no one has gone before. Now, although I have to say, as a grammarian, it pains me to split an infinitive, and I will, I will have occasion to do so in a few minutes, once again, I will rephrase that one by saying, to go boldly where no one has gone before. Well, the people behind this partnership, while not traveling through space, are absolutely exploring new frontiers of what makes up our universe and how it came to be. And while the dimensions of the particles that they are researching are minute, the implications of these discoveries are monumental and fundamental to the very properties of science as we know it. They are asking big questions and confronting ideas and theories to find new truths, measurements, and proof to help future generations of scientists navigate the far reaches of physics, allowing them to develop new technologies with the knowledge of the key properties of these important building blocks. Canada is considered a world-class destination for astroparticle physics research, and that clearly cannot be credited to the work of one institution alone, but from many working together, our partners across the country. So for today's announcement, I'm delighted to be accompanied by Sandra Crocker, Associate Vice President, Strategic Initiatives and Operations at Carleton University, one of our initial university partners working as part of the SNOW and SNOW Lab collaborations, and most recently, a partner in Seapark, who would now like to say a few words. Sandra, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Principal Wolf. I'm still getting used to the principal versus president lexicon, so thank you very much. Um, as you so eloquently point out, uh, as Canadians, we're at the leading edge of new frontiers in particle physics, and Carleton University is extremely proud to have been with all of you for this nearly 30-year journey to get here today. Over the years, Carleton faculty members have made important contributions to the world of particle physics and have formed an extremely well-respected faculty, not only in the field of particle physics, but, as my colleague points out, also in the fields of medical and theoretical physics. Our partnership story begins with David Sinclair, who left Oxford University on sabbatical in the mid-1980s to join Cliss Hargrove and participate in the very first feasibility studies for the Sudbury Neutrino Experiment. This international group of visionaries, David from the UK, Art McDonald, George Ewan, and Chris Hargrove from Canada, Herb Chen and Jean Beer from the US, with a good deal of determination, innovation, adaptation, and no doubt significant frustration, brought the original experiment to life. We have Mark Boulet with us today as Carleton's Canada Research Chair in Particle Astrophysics and Subatomic Physics. He's working with the Deep 3600 detector at Snow Lab to pursue the development of next generation experiments and techniques in the in search for dark matter. Also with us today is Simon Vale, who was hired at Carleton thanks specifically to the CIFREF program. He brings with him a wealth of knowledge and exemplifies the value in the creation of new positions to bring the vision of SPARK to fruition. Not only have we built now world-class physical resources, but because of the CIFREF program, we're rapidly attracting world-class human resources across the country. Of course, none of the significant advances we've made over the years could have been realized without the perspectives and contributions of all partners and contributors. And when CIFREF was announced in 2016, it generated a lot of excitement for what this network would mean for research and for Canada. As has been mentioned, with eight institutions and five research organizations all working together, there really are no limits to what we can achieve. So I'd like to take a moment to individually recognize each of them. Collectively, the CPARC SPARC initiative is embodied by the University of Alberta, the University of British Columbia, Laurentian University, McGill University, University of Toronto, Université de Montréal, my home institution, Carleton University, and your host today, Queen's University. Research organizations participating include the Canadian Institute for Advanced Research, the Institute of Particle Physics, the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics, Snow Lab, and Triumph. Since 2016, this team has been busy building the network, 
recruiting 13 new faculty, with more to be announced shortly, from around the world, hiring a scientific director, developing programming and outreach, and setting the groundwork for current and future projects that will include over 100 researchers, staff, and students at its full complement. And so I'd like to close by saying, Félicitations à nos scientifiques exceptionnels. Merci aux agences qui financent ce travail. Et chapeau à tout le monde pour en faire une réalité. It is such a pleasure to be able to share a part of this day with you today. And with that, I believe Principal Wolf has something else he might like to share. Thank you, Sandra. Almost two years ago, the Canada First Research Excellence Fund awarded more than $63 million to create a Canadian Astroparticle Physics Research Centre. This funding has enabled the network to grow, to expand what we know is possible, and to look towards a bright future. With the experiments and collaboration taking place throughout our partner institutions, we can achieve breakthroughs and discoveries in a much quicker time frame. I'm excited about the next big breakthrough and announcement, signaling a major discovery and win for science in Canada. Because as far as we've come to get to today, there is still a long road ahead of us with more incredible milestones along the way. With this success and potential, we're excited about the momentum that's been building, and we feel confident we are on the precipice of an exciting new chapter, particularly as new experiments related to the mysteries of dark matter are being explored. And I promise I won't keep you in the dark about this matter much longer. In choosing a name and identity for this network, it was important to recognize past achievements while charting a course for the future. We want to build on that legacy and momentum while honoring an individual who embodies the values of leadership, integrity, and collaboration, who pushes scientific boundaries and inspires the hearts and minds of researchers and science enthusiasts alike. Someone who continually seeks to make not only important scientific connections, but also human ones between brilliant minds already advanced in these studies and those of students looking to make their mark. I am sure many of you will agree with me that there is no one more deserving nor appropriate to honor in this way than Dr. Arthur MacDonald. So, with all of you present today and watching via live stream, it's our distinct pleasure and absolute honor to launch officially the Arthur B. MacDonald Canadian Astrophysics Research Institute. now like to introduce you to the Arthur B. Macdonald Canadian Astroparticle Physics Research Institute. The experiment that the SNOW team accomplished that led to the Nobel Prize could only have occurred under the conditions that still exist today at our underground laboratory, SNOW Lab. I'm very pleased to welcome the world's particle astrophysics community to come to Canada to work at Snow Lab 
and to interact with the wonderful team that comes together through our new institute. Welcome to Canada and welcome to some great science. Particle astrophysics is the study of the basic building blocks of nature. It explores the fundamental properties of the universe. Dark matter is the glue that holds the universe together, and without it, scientists believe the universe would spiral apart. Canada's Snow Lab is an underground science laboratory. This world-class facility is located two kilometers below the surface of the Earth. And because it is located underground, it is shielded from cosmic radiation. In 2015, Dr. Arthur McDonald and Japanese scientist Dr. Takaaki Kajita won the Nobel Prize for Physics. It has been said that behind every success, there is effort. Behind the effort, there is passion. Behind the passion, there are people with the courage to try. Queen's University and its partners are spearheading the creation for the Arthur B. Macdonald Canadian Astroparticle Physics Research Institute to galvanize the physics community towards the next big discovery and exploit the possibilities for research. The Macdonald Institute is creating 100 new research positions, including 14 faculty, to continue the Canadian tradition of physics excellence. The study of physics fuels some of the fastest growing industries in Canada. Our physics grads in Canada go on to careers in research and innovation, big data analytics and artificial intelligence, film and animation, aerospace engineering, and they are transforming the financial and natural resources sectors. Physics fuels the latest in technology innovation and is producing highly trained talent for these sectors in Canada nature of dark matter, the, the ultimate fate of the universe, why we live in a universe that's made of matter instead of antimatter. All of these things we don't have answers for yet. And yet, tantalizingly, we have the wherewithal now to start exploring those questions and trying to answer them. It's happening now. C'est maintenant que ça se passe. It's happening now. 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 Ça se passe maintenant. It's happening now. C'est maintenant que ça se passe. It's happening now. It's happening now. Very inspiring, wonderful launch. Uh, you'll notice that at Snow Lab, people always wear hard hats underground, and I'm happy to report that we all declined the opportunity to wear hard hats as the banner came down this morning. <laughs> what a launch of Canada's continued leadership and presence in astroparticle physics. Just a wonderful day for Canada and for research. And I'd like to borrow a phrase from the naylor macdonald report, which reviewed fundamental science. Research from the Macdonald Institute brings Canada to the world, and the world to Canada. This is really an important day for Queen's, for our partners, for those of you watching us through the live stream. And I hope you all have popped a little bubbly uh, at home in the live stream uh, to celebrate this wonderful day for research. The Institute will be fostering and advancing research at the frontiers of physics. You've already heard that it will lead to a brain gain for Canada and the physics community through the hiring of new faculty, providing opportunities for graduate students, and building collaborations and partnerships that leverage worldwide expertise to respond to scientific challenges and fundamental curiosity and need to know. This partnership, just in case you've lost track, across eight institutions, five research organizations, leverages over $255 million of federal investment from the Government of Canada and the Canada Foundation for Innovation. This investment in astroparticle physics research over the last 20 years has led us to today. 
We thank you for your foresight and continued support. And it's my pleasure to introduce our friend from the Government of Canada to say a few words on their behalf. The Honourable Kate Young was first elected Member of Parliament for London West in October 2015. She was subsequently appointed Parliamentary Secretary to the Ministry of Transport by Prime Minister Trudeau and served in that role until January 2017. In 2017, she was appointed Parliamentary Secretary for Science and in this role, she has been a true ambassador of for science, an advocate for research and higher education. She's been actively involved in the implementation of the Fundamental Science Review and in the promotion of the Budget 2018's important investment in science. Please join me in welcoming the Honourable Kate Young to the podium. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, John, for that kind introduction. Vice Chancellor Wolf, Associate Vice President Crocker, Dr. McDonald, guests, and those watching live stream across Canada and around the world. Why not? Bonjour à toutes et à tous. C'est un plaisir d'être ici avec vous aujourd'hui. My thanks to uh, Dr. Wolf and Sandra. Uh, Crocker for helping to honor the work of Dr. Art McDonald in such a significant and meaningful way. Dr. L uh, McDonald, allow me to expand, uh, extend a warm greeting on behalf of our friend and colleague, Kirsty Duncan, the Minister of Science and Minister of Sport and Persons with Disabilities. She is such a fan and would have loved to have been here today. When I became Parliamentary Secretary, one of the first things the uh, minister said is, you have to meet Dr. McDonald. You will love him. <laughs> I am very humbled to be here today at this very important event, recognizing the outstanding contributions of this extraordinary man. I think it's fair to say that we are all fans of your work and your incredible accomplishments, both here at Queen's and at Snow Lab. From your start in Sydney, Nova Scotia, to Dalhousie, Caltech, Princeton, and finally here at Queen's, your legacy of curiosity, hard work, and never backing down from a challenge is an inspiration to us all. And that's why in Canada, there is no better namesake for this research institute than Dr. McDonald. Your Nobel Prize winning work serves as an example of the kind of excellence from which Canadian science is known. Dr. McDonald and his teams have done so much to strengthen Canada's reputation for astroparticle physics research. Dr. McDonald, on behalf of our government, thank you for all that you have done, and congratulations. Our government has been proud to support the work of the Canadian Particle Astrophysics Research Centre from the start. This pan-Canadian initiative makes the most of our considerable capacity in the field. The centre is a shining example of what can happen when governments believe in the power of science. It is a belief we continue to hold that science holds the answers to some of the most profound questions. The answers to those questions give us the evidence we need to make decisions about our health and safety, our economy and communities, and our future. And so that's why we have delivered on our promise to support science and to bring it back to where it belongs at the federal table. As many of you know, we have made significant investments in research over our first two budgets billions of dollars for science, infrastructure, and innovation programs. And Budget 2018 makes a record-setting investment of nearly $4 billion in new support for discovery research. We are also setting aside more than $1.3 billion to give our researchers the tools and spaces they need to carry out their work. All of these numbers sum up to one value. We know that if we want to build a better future for all people, we must start with science. I could go on, but I don't want to keep us waiting any longer for the person we are here to celebrate. This man is a science leader with a keen intellect and such a generous heart willing to share those gifts with the world. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Canada's own 2015 Nobel Prize winner for physics, Dr. Arthur B. Macdonald. I'm very grateful and I'm also very humbled by the inclusion of my name in the title of our new institute. I know that here in the audience today there are a tremendous number of people who have contributed to the journey that brought us to, uh, to today. Raise your hand if you worked on the snow project or if you are currently working on the uh, uh, at Snow Lab. Uh, those of you on the uh, on the internet connection, raise your hands too and we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll know what's happening. Please raise your hands. Uh, just look at the... Uh... And what you have to realize is, this, uh, is that this all started back in 1984 with the vision of uh, Professor George Ewan, who is uh, here in the audience with us today. George, would you stand? So I'm, I'm personally grateful to all of those people who have uh, contributed so much to our success. But what's wonderful today is also to see the, the new generation of, of institute scientists who are sitting on either side here and represented by uh, Marie Cecile uh, today, and uh, who will speak later. And uh, I mean, it's just great. We have this world-class facility, and now we have the next generation of people who are going to uh, carry it forward. And I can, I can easily see that this will be a very fruitful future uh, with the next generation of Canadian scientists working with our international colleagues at our world-leading underground laboratory, Snow Lab, and Nigel Smith, our laboratory director, is here with us today as well. Can you raise your hand, Nigel? There he is. <laughs> so this has been a great, a great partnership over the years, and we're, uh, we're very grateful to Carleton University uh, and with the construction project of Snow Lab, led by David Sinclair at, at Carleton. And uh, so the creation of, of Snow Lab uh, was led by Carleton. We've had a great partnership with all the other institutions who are now part of our new institute and have been strong supporters of our work uh, in the past. Uh, I'm particularly grateful myself to Queen's University, who's provided extensive support for so many years for our activities uh, in this field. And of course, also to the funding agencies and the Government of Canada that have uh, provided the support that enabled us uh, to do this and, and really to come to the point where we're leading the world in this field. And that, that will be particularly true with this institute, with the intellectual aspect of this institute and with the young people who are working already on projects at Snow Lab, but who will bring that new uh, spirit and enthusiasm to uh, the potential for the future. And of course, I. Uh, want to look out uh, and see my, my wife, Janet, and my uh, son, Bruce, uh, his wife, Alexandra, and his daughter, Isabel, and my daughter, Heather Geiger, here in the audience, who have... Would you uh, stand for a moment? They, along with, uh, with my other uh, children, Ross and Fraser, and their families have provided tremendous support for me, and I'd like to say thank you for, for that. Um, they're representative, of course, of the many families who have supported all the people who are currently doing the scientific work, and uh, we, we want to keep that in mind as we uh, go forward. So I congratulate Tony for his hard work and, and success in the creation of this new institute. I'm going to follow the progress of this institute uh, with real interest in its, both its scientific work and also its outreach 
activities as we go forward. And thank you very much for this tremendous honor. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Art. I know that everyone here is uh, delighted to share this moment with you and to be part of this, this great day at Queen's and with our institutional partners across the country. Uh, as a VPR, it's been a real privilege to interact with the now uh, McDonald Institute, uh, to be part of the board and to discuss its future. Uh, physics at Queen's and Physics Across Canada is, is built on vision. It's built on vision, sacrifice, dedication, and it's built on many years of hard work to bring us to where we are today. And I too would like to acknowledge Professor Emeritus, George Ewan in the audience, uh, and of course Art's family, who have what's known in the vernacular as the dinner table PhD in astroparticle physics. I'm delighted now to welcome Professor Tony Noble, scientific director of the newly minted McDonald Institute to the podium to share with us his vision for the Institute and introduce a few important new team members. Tony. Well, this is really great and I, I welcome you all here. When I look out into the crowd, I see so many familiar faces from across the country, from my colleagues, from my peers, both in the physics department and in departments all across Canada. And then I recognize the faces of so many people that have been instrumental in putting this together from Queens, from research services, from advancement, from intergovernmental relations. It really is a collection of people that have worked hard to, uh, to generate this event, but also to generate the place that we stand now in terms of uh, the accomplishments we have had. It really has been an awful lot of effort. So we have a tremendous opportunity ahead of us. Uh, I'm acutely aware that this opportunity has been generated based on the hard work and the sacrifices of an, a, lot, a lot of people that came before us in terms of the uh, founding SNOW members, many of them are here today, of their families and supporters who play an equally important role. Um, they have all really made this possible. I'm indebted to Art McDonald uh, as a leader, as a mentor, as a friend, and as somebody who has taught me that it's okay to dream big in Canada. And I think with this new institute, that really is what we're trying to do. Our current position, of course, is enabled by the trust and unwavering support that we have had, both from our universities across Canada and from the funding agencies, both at the federal and provincial level. Without all of that support and help, we just wouldn't have been here today. So our vision with the Institute is to build a community of researchers, faculty members, postdocs, students, engineers, technical staff members, administrative staff. Over 100 new positions altogether that collectively will work to attract and enable the best science possible to further cement Canada's role as a leader in the field of astroparticle physics. So we are focused on some of the most pressing questions in science today. We are trying to understand at the very basic level, the properties of the most fundamental particles of nature, and at the same time to interpret those results in terms of their influence on the structures and the evolution of the universe. All the while, while providing opportunities for students at all stages of their career to be engaged in the science and to outreach to the public to share the excitement and the wonder of what we're discovering and what we are enabling. So the McDonald Institute is a truly international undertaking. We are undertaking a large number of major international experiments with hundreds of uh, collaborators from, from all around the world working on those experiments. We benefit from the Snow Lab facility, a world-class facility located two kilometers underground in Sudbury and the excellent team there that brings together and builds the entire community. We are trying to bridge experiment to theory 
and we're bringing in a lot of interdisciplinary expertise to bear new ideas on the uh, problems that we're facing. From eight universities and five research institutes all across Canada, I would like to uh, introduce some of the new faculty now. And I'll ask, uh, as I uh, call out people's names, and I believe they'll appear on the back uh, as well, I'd like you to stand and be acknowledged. And uh, I'll ask the, the audience to perhaps uh, hold their applause until the end. I think I have 14.32 seconds per person allocated. <laughs> so, Levente Balach is an assistant uh, professor at Queen's University. He's in the material engineering department. Originally from Hungary, but recently from the Chalk River Labs, his research focuses on developing applications to use the Queen's accelerator uh, facility to support uh, the particle astrophysics program. Joseph Bramante is an assistant professor at Queen's and also a visiting fellow at the Perimeter Institute. His field of research is astroparticle uh, theory. Originally from the USA, via the Perimeter Institute, his research interests are in the nature of dark matter and cosmology, and he is the most creative person I've ever met in terms of developing new ideas for what that dark matter might be. Ken Clark is uh, an expert, oh sorry, an assistant professor at Queen's, uh, joined with the uh, uh, Triumph Laboratory. He's an experimentalist, an expert on dark matter search experiments and neutrino physics. He's been working uh, in numerous places around the world, including the South Pole on the Ice Cube experiment. He's leading uh, the detector development on the PICO project uh, here at Queen's. Guillaume Giroux, also an assistant professor at Queen's, and somehow alphabetically all the first ones are from Queen's. He's an experimentalist. Uh, his research program is working on the PICO dark matter experiment and an exciting new program called News G also a dark matter experiment. He's uh, the current analysis coordinator. He returned to Canada after having a postdoctoral position in Switzerland to work on PICO. And Matthew Leiborn, uh, an associate professor at Queen's. Uh, he's actually in the geochemistry department in geology. Uh, and it was a, a tremendous find for us to find someone who is an expert through his geochemical background in trace element analysis and isotopic measurements that are so critical in aiding us in our analysis of the low backgrounds that are required for Snow Lab. Uh, Kaio Lisiaki, uh, he's an assistant professor at Laurentian University, also an experimentalist. He's a leading member of the NEXO uh, neutrino experiment uh, with strong Canadian leadership, as well as participating on PICO a dark matter experiment. He's originally from Brazil, but had training in the US and France before coming to Canada. Uh, Marie-Cécile Pirot, who sits there, uh, is launching a new group in Alberta with focus on ultra-low background techniques and dark matter searches. She's a world expert in these areas. She came to Canada from uh, Guadeloupe initially uh, to get her university training. Wolfgang Rao, somehow the order is wrong there. Uh, Canadian leader on the Super CDMS experiment, originally from Germany, became a Canada Research Chair at Queen's, and is now about to launch a new exciting group at Triumph. Alan Robinson is an assistant professor at the University de Montréal, an experimentalist. He's launching uh, a dark matter search experiment with both Super CDMS and Pico. He was brought back to Canada following a PhD at the University of Chicago and then postdoctoral training at uh, Fermilab. Simon Viel is an assistant professor at Carleton, uh, an experimentalist. He's already taking major leadership role on the Deep 3600 dark matter search experiment and proposed successors to that experiment. He came back to Canada after having a postdoctoral position in the US. Aaron Vincent, uh, assistant professor at Queen's astroparticle physics theory. Aaron is creating that intellectual bridge between the world of particle physics and astronomy, astrophysics, studying uh, from the minutest of scales to the grandest of scales and trying to put it all in perspective for us. He was recruited back to Canada from the United Kingdom. Ben Wang is an assistant professor at Queen's 
and an expert on radiation detectors. He will actually be starting at Queen's in June. He's uh, coming to the Queen's chemistry department and from having a detector development position in Canadian industry. And not able to join us uh, today is uh, Juan Pablo Yanez Gassa, an assistant professor in Alberta, an experimentalist. He's a leading member on Snow Plus and of the Ice Cube experiment at the South Pole. He came to Canada as a prestigious Banting Fellow and is soon going to take up his professorship in Alberta. Originally from Mexico, he received his PhD and postdoctoral training in Germany. And I'm also happy to announce that we have another position, which is at the final stages at the University of Toronto. They're negotiating with their top candidate, and I expect within a few weeks we'll be able to announce another member to the suite of uh, faculty. So join me in welcoming these new members to the community. So now let me introduce a special guest, a colleague of mine, Marie-Cécile Pirot, friend and uh, longtime collaborator. Marie-Cécile has a breadth of experience working on dark matter experiments at facilities in Canada, in France, and in Italy. She obtained her PhD in Montreal in 2002, working on an experiment that I was associated with called Picasso. And following her postdoctoral work, she is now building her research team as a new faculty member at the University of Alberta. She moved from the Caribbean island of Guadeloupe, her birthplace, to Edmonton, but is otherwise quite rational. <laughs> Please welcome her to say a few words on behalf of the new faculty. Hello, bonjour, uh, everyone. It's really a great pleasure for me to be here and uh, to have the chance to, to talk about my new experience, uh, thanks to uh, the Hart MacDonald Institute, uh, Spark, uh, and also what uh, it brought to me uh, now. So as Tony said, uh, I was postdoc for a few years uh, in many countries. Uh, uh, in France, uh, in uh, Italy, United States, uh, and uh, always traveling, always moving, always on the way to go. And uh, even my friends, my parents always uh, name me, oh, the Globetrotter, never at the same place. Uh, and uh, thanks to the McDonald Institute, uh, I had the possibility to, to have a position somewhere for me, it was unimaginable that I, I will get a position uh, in Canada. It's so, it was so rare to have this possibility. So when all the position opened, to be honest, I was not uh, very sure if I want to settle down uh, because I like uh, traveling, I like meeting people, I like, uh, yes, I like its life. And uh, in Canada, I moved. Uh, and uh, what I like, uh, it's uh, all the mentality, personality, the research also in physics that I achieved uh, during my master, PhD, uh, was so great. Uh, so it's really correspond to my personality, my thoughts. Uh, and, uh, and really, thanks to Spark, I had really the possibility to do it. So I applied to the position. I, uh, because a lot of positions uh, opened and uh, it was a good timing for me. And uh, it was also my first time that I apply as a faculty, uh, at a faculty position. So first application was uh, in Alberta, my first interview of my life. Uh, and uh, really it was the greatest experience that I had. Uh, when I arrived uh, in Edmonton, uh, the team, the Department of Science, uh, the building is brand new, and uh, really uh, all the people I met uh, was so welcoming. I, I really felt uh, comfortable already in my element. Uh, University of Alberta is, uh, I was super impressed 
all the facilities, all the resources uh, for the students, the researcher. It, it really, uh, yes, uh, even when I go back uh, to my parents' place, because my family is uh, in, in Montreal, I said, whoa, even if I apply to University of Montreal, hmm, the choice will be very, very difficult. Unimaginable huh, for uh, people from an island in a normally cold uh, region. But the winter passed very well. It's a very nice environment. And uh, on top of that, Edmonton, for me, it's a very, very nice city. I hope for everyone to have the chance to visit uh, and to see uh, the unique environment that uh, we have at the uh, University of Alberta. And uh, finally, thanks to Spark, uh, thanks to all McDonald Institute, we have now a position, young people, uh, that you see a lot of uh, faculty position now to really have a big impact uh, on the physics community to, to make research. And uh, for all of us, uh, I said really thank you. Thank you, McDonald Institute, to allow us to realize our dream in particle physics uh, and uh, also to for all the, the, the society for physics. So thank you, merci, grazie, d'un cochon, <laughs> McDonald Institute. I recognize we broke all the rules of which podium we're supposed to use. Thank you, Mary Cecile. So one of the principal goals of the McDonald Institute is to provide uh, foundational learning experiences for students at all stages of their careers. And I'm delighted to introduce uh, Liz Fletcher. Uh, Liz obtained her Bachelor of Science degree while she was at Queen's University and is now working on her master's degree also at Queen's and working on the Snow Plus Neutrino experiment at Snow Lab. So please, Liz, maybe you would go to that podium <laughs> to say a few words about your experience. Thank you, Tony. Uh, so as Tony mentioned, my name is Liz Fletcher and I'm a graduate student here at Queen's where I work with the Snow Plus Research Group. I can't say how excited I am about the opportunities that will cre be created by the McDonald Institute for students like me in the coming years. I did my undergraduate degree in physics here at Queen's, where I was exposed to some amazing researchers and even had the chance to work with some of them. As someone who hadn't really considered experimental physics as a career path, this was an amazing opportunity that opened my eyes to careers that I had never even considered. The McDonald Institute's hiring of more faculty and its availability of funding for undergraduate and graduate students means that even more, even more students will be able to have experiences like mine and to be able to contribute to the astroparticle physics community and to the larger physics community as a whole. This process will be enabled by the fostering of an amazing research environment across all of the McDonald Institute partner institutions. It will allow for an increase in opportunities for students to get involved, especially at the undergrad level, from summer positions to thesis projects and independent study projects. In my opinion, these experiences are extremely valuable and I make a point of trying to encourage as many students as I can to try them out. They may love it and discover that this is what they want to do with their lives or they may find that research is just not for them. But either way, they have an opportunity to learn valuable skills and knowledge and to learn from supervisors who are leaders in their fields. The more students and faculty with different backgrounds and experiences we have working together, the more we can learn. Having diverse perspectives, looking at a problem is the best way to come up with solutions that you would never have considered. I look forward to seeing this develop within the McDonald Institute. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. So I hope you're all as excited as I am about the prospects for the McDonald Institute. With a critical mass of researchers and students, we will challenge the frontiers of research and in the process create new knowledge, create new opportunities, and create innovations for uh, Canadians tomorrow. We're also excited about another goal at Queen's of establishing a new home for the Institute, a building with a state-of-the-art research facilities that enables the science encourages interactive learning, fosters collaboration, and provides a welcome front 
for our public outreach activities. This is a program we refer to at the moment as Physics Plus, where we're trying to uh, develop a new uh, physics building with, with all of these features. So I look forward to uh, sharing these discoveries and milestones with you all as we embark on this journey together. Thank you to all of you who came out today and to all of you around the world watching us on uh, live stream. Thank you. Thank you, Tony, and thank you all for your words uh, regarding physics at Queen's. We're closing in on the end of our program, but bear with me a little longer, please. Uh, it's not lost on any of you that we're witnessing today the future of physics in Canada. Uh, and it's routine in science to acknowledge that we stand on the shoulders of giants in our work. And so we have a really uh, interesting uh, convergence here with those new faculty members, the future of physics, who will stand on the shoulders of giants who have established physics in Canada. And this is really a historic moment for Queen's and for Canadian physics. Today's announcement will ensure that the Macdonald Institute researchers across a range of disciplines in physics, chemistry, and engineering will continue to push the boundaries of knowledge, break new ground, build stronger relationships with our partners and collaborators, and develop successful commercialization and spin-off opportunities around the world. They will benefit both our understanding of the universe as well as our lives and how we live them. I look forward to seeing what the McDonald Institute will accomplish in the years to come and, and know that it will continue to garner significant support from our government partners who are here today. Thank you to all of you. So a few housekeeping items before we conclude. Uh, I invite you to join us in the Isabel Atrium for a light luncheon, a chance to interact with the McDonald Institute researchers, staff, and partner institutions. Rumor has it there's a photo booth for you to share photos to the McDonald Institute's new social media channels, and shuttles will continue to loop between the Isabel and Sterling Hall until two this afternoon. If you're able, I encourage you to check out the new McDonald Institute Visitor Center, an interactive science experience in Sterling Hall that will officially open its doors this afternoon. Finally, a few weeks ago, we unveiled a stunning display of the Nobel Prize Medal at the Agnes Etherington Arts Center on campus. The same day, a commemorative plinth detailing the neutrino breakthrough was unveiled outside of Ontario Hall the original home of the physics department. Both of these displays serve as reminders of the research excellence in physics that exists in Canada and at Queen's, and I encourage you to visit these, as I'm sure the sun will come out this afternoon. Thanks to those who have joined us, both in person and via live stream, and in, lastly, I'd like to acknowledge the wonderful work of both the uh, VP University Relations and Advancement uh, portfolios have done in organizing this event, Specifically, Melinda and Judy, thank you very much. It's a wonderful day, and please, I look forward to discussion in the foyer at the end of the event. Thank you.